Okay, so with that, let's jump to a demo, and I just wanted to do a quick check. How am I doing on, on time, Dave and Dave? Uh, you're doing pretty good, Scott. We've got, uh, you know, f between five to ten minutes for a demo. Great. Okay. I'll, I'll keep it pretty uh, concise. Perfect. Okay. So this is the Google Tag Manager interface. From that poll we did earlier, it seems like most of you, but not all of you, are, are probably familiar with this, but I'll do a quick walkthrough. Um, the, there are really three concepts that it's beneficial to, to understand when you're starting to use Google Tag Manager. Tags, triggers, and variables. Now tags are, are really all of the, the tools that you're trying to deploy, uh, whether it's Google Analytics or, or DoubleClick, and each tool like Google Analytics can have any number of tags. So I can have a page view tag for one set of pages and another page view tag for another set, um, or an event tag, and, and so on and so forth. Triggers are the rules that help you uh, deploy those tags. So it's a, a set of conditions that say when the page URL matches foo or when this when a click occurs and that button is is has this click class and so on like and so forth um, to be able to say fire this tag um, and variables are essentially pieces of are their instructions on where to capture the pieces of information that power those triggers and those tags so an example of the variable that I just used uh, page URL right so obviously page URL is going to go up to the URL and grab that value for you and then allow you to use that as part of a, a trigger or to populate that as a field in the tag. So in addition to all the built-in variables that we have, um, and there are a, a host of them here um, that you can turn on and off so that they don't clutter your interface, you can go and create a lot of different types of variables to pull information from um, the data layer, as Dave had talked about earlier, or JavaScript variables or cookies or things like that. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of power here. But let's take a look at tagging for a moment. And, you know, I think it's worth noting, um, currently I'm in this container, and if we take a look up here, I'm logged in as Anna Analytics. And Anna wants to go and make a new uh, Google Analytics uh, tag for a new uh, page that she's working on, um, and she sees that there's all these in-progress changes. Right now we're in this default workspace, so if you've never thought about workspaces before or you don't want to, this is the space where you'll be, right? And she can come in here and see, oh, there's all this in-progress work. I don't want this to conflict with what I need to do, and actually she can already see that there is a conflict here um, between another workspace that was being worked on, so it'll very clearly tell her that, and she can go in and resolve it and it'll let her know, oh, it looks like on the right this is the current workspace. In the latest version, somebody had changed the tracking ID, right? So she can choose if she wants to bring that over or not, resolve it, or, or ignore it. Um, we'll just ignore this for now, but that's one of the nice visual conflict resolution tools that we've built into this interface. Um, so she wants to create a new tag. What we'll do is we'll actually go over to the workspaces uh, window here and click this plus to create a new workspace. And we'll call this new GA, let's just do an event. New GA event, and we'll give it a description. I always recommend doing this. New GA event for um, the new buttons we're adding. Okay, and we'll save this. Uh, workspace. Now you can see this workspace is clear. There's nothing in here. If I do go to the tags and triggers and variables, we're still in the, in the same container, but we're sort of in a fresh um, workspace on top of that container. Um, so no changes have been made is what this is telling me. Now what I'll do, I'll go into my tag section here, and I'll create a new tag. I'll click to choose a tag to type to begin setup. And here we can see a list of all the tags that are available in this co container context. Now, if I were in uh, a mobile container or an AMP container, the, the tags uh, here might be different. We might see more tags or, or a different set of tags. In a web container like this, I can see all of the, the Google featured tags up top, some custom tags that are available to me, and then all of these third-party tags as well. We'll select the universal analytics tag. Um, I had said I wanted to do an event. So we will do that here. I'll just call this button click, um, click 
click. And then, you know, I don't, you can think about the, the right, um, the right things to include in your own measurement strategy. I'm just picking some things quickly here. Uh, and now I'm being prompted for my, my GA settings variable, right? And uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier. It looks like somebody has already set up a standard GA settings variable for me, so I don't have to think about any of my, my settings. Um, if I want to see what that is, I can click the info icon, and it'll show me, oh, it's just setting it to UA-12345-1, which is a, a fake uh, property. If I wanted to override any of those settings, I can do that by checking this box. And now I could go and adjust that tracking ID, but keep all the other settings, or I could click in here and adjust some of the custom dimensions and metrics and so on. And we will configure this. Let's do this based on um, this. Let's create a new trigger here, and we'll do this on clicks of some clicks, and we'll do clicks where the click classes contains blue. Okay, so we have this new click trigger set up, we have this tag, and this is our UA blue button uh, event tag. Okay, so we'll save this, and now we'll actually go to Submit It. And you can see, because N Analytics has Approve Access but not Publish, she can't publish this change. Um, she can either create a version, which will create a snapshot of this change set, or she can request approval, which is what she'll do. And she'll request approval from Devin Developer. And say, hey Devin, new GA event tag, please take a look. Okay, and then request that. And she'll see that it's pending approval, and if we were to switch over to uh, Devin and refresh the page, and this is what Devin would see, we see he has a little notification in his approval, approval section with this tag here. Hey Devin, new GA event tag. Looks good. And then she, he can just approve this and submit the changes and publish it. And now this, this change will be live on the website. Um, one thing to note, um, we always recommend previewing your changes before you, you do publish them live. Uh, this button here will put you into a preview mode. And then when we go to our website and do a refresh of that page, we can see all the tags that have fired here and all the tags that haven't yet fired. So definitely a great way to ensure that uh, you're QAing your, your tag configurations effectively. Okay, so let's now switch back to the presentation. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things I wanted to highlight here is that we're, we're focusing a lot on this co collaboration of tagging to make your, your lives easier, uh, but also to ensure that all of the, the data that's being collected as a result of this, you know, remember that we think of this really as the foundation of a lot of these other tools that you're using. It's really important that your, your data is accurate. Right? And a tool like this can ensure that can help you ensure that things are being done consistently across pages, across different websites, that all of the users who need to be involved in this are, are involved and have reviewed things, that you've checked things on your different testing environments, and so on.